So the next thing we have to say about partial differential equations, lest you think that we're going to just step in here and in three days teach you everything there is to know about uh, solving every partial differential equation in existence, partial differential equations uh, are difficult. They're not trivial and there are a lot of different types of partial differential equations and we don't know uh, a general method of, of, of uh, having great solutions to all of them. Okay, so really every partial differential equation you, you really treat a, as a different animal. And so the first thing, one of the first things and one of the most important things that we need to be able to do is to classify a partial differential equation because you can't solve a problem until you know what the nature of the problem is, at least with partial differential equations. Just like you would go about um, solving a, uh, for example, a a tridiagonal uh, linear system. We talked about that before. You'd go about solving that linear system much differently uh, than you would go about solving, oh, an eigenvalue problem. And, I mean, those are very different uh, beasts. The same way, one partial differential equation is completely different from another. So there are a lot of different classifications that we could do. So I'm just going to enumerate first some of those classifications. So you could do uh, linear, um, Nonlinear, and there, there's also quasi, quasi linear, which is nonlinear, but a special type of nonlinear. There's first order, second order, and then maybe I'll just say higher order. There are autonomous. We, we saw this with um, ordinary differential equations. There's autonomous and uh, non-autonomous. There's homogeneous and uh, non-homogeneous. And there are uh, explicit and implicit. Okay, so here's here's just some of the different ways that we can classify uh, partial differential equations, and we could try to draw a great big Venn diagram. Uh, uh, including all of these, but it's a li little difficult in only two dimensions. But you can get a lot of it in there uh, if you really try. So, so we have all these different ways that we can classify them. Well, um, we're not we're not going to go too much into all of them. But what we will look at is uh, a little more. Is we need to we need to take a look at this linear versus nonlinear. We really need to know how to tell the difference between a linear and a nonlinear partial differential equation, just as we try to teach you how to tell the difference between a linear and a nonlinear ordinary differential equation. Uh, the other thing uh, that we're really going to need to, to know uh, is we're going to, among the linear, uh, linear pa partial differential equations that are second order and lower, uh, so these first and second order, uh, we're going to look at an additional breakdown for that. So we're going to look at this in a little bit more detail. So uh, then uh, let's move right into uh, the linear versus nonlinear um, comparison. So a function is linear. So let's write this linear versus nonlinear P D E. All right. We'll just start that as a new topic here. And so uh, a PDE is linear if, so this is, this is a sufficient condition, but not necessary. Um, but, but a lot of times this will, this will be what you'll find. So it's linear if the unknown function, and that would be in, in the example that I give, uh, in the example that I gave above, that we called that u, in the unknown I linear, if the unknown function uh, and its derivatives are 
appear to the power of 1. And again, this is sufficient but not necessary. Okay, it is otherwise nonlinear otherwise. Uh, there's another condition that we could say is uh, if, if, if the linear, if the unknown function, so nonlinear if function has nonlinear operator The function, this is the unknown function, has a nonlinear operator. So if we have, for example, the sine of u, that's that's a nonlinear operator. So that would be that would be a case of nonlinear. Uh, all right. So now let's just go through a few examples so we can get a feel for for classifying linear versus nonlinear. So uh, the first example then that I'm going to say is what happens if we have um, here, let's just switch colors here. If we have the partial uh, of u with respect to t plus t times the partial of u with respect to x, and that's set equal to zero. All right, so uh, is this linear or nonlinear? Hmm. All right, well, it actually turns out that it's linear. And you might think, no, that's not linear. We have a t multiplied by a by a u. Well, it's not t times a u. It's a t times a, a derivative of u. But that's okay. That's allowed. We could even have a t squared here uh, times du dx. That's totally fine because this is not the unknown. This is not the u. And so that's that's totally fine. All right. So now let's get another example here. Let's say we have a function, uh, the second partial of u. Uh, with respect to x uh, plus the second partial of u with respect to uh, y and let's say that's equal to zero. Is this linear or nonlinear? Think about it for a second. So uh, this is linear. This is linear because again we don't have uh, u, the unknown function, it's not appearing to a power greater than one. This is a second derivative, but that's fine. Uh, and so, and and we don't have any signs or anything like that in here. So this is, so this is linear. All right. So what's another example uh, here? How about this one? The partial. Let's see. The partial of u uh, with respect to t plus partial cubed, uh, so it's the third partial of u uh, with respect to x, um, and we set that equal to 6u times the partial of u uh, with respect to x. Okay, so is this linear or nonlinear? This one is actually nonlinear. And why is this nonlinear? Well, it's nonlinear because we have this u multiplied by uh, by the derivative here. So we have this u uh, multiplied by the derivative. That's what makes it nonlinear. If if this were an x or a or a y or a, well t, if this were an x or a t multiplied, we'd be fine. But it's a u multiplied by this derivative. So uh, so this equation is uh, nonlinear. All right. Uh, next equation. Let's say the partial of v uh, with respect to t plus one half sigma squared s squared uh, partial of v uh, with with respect to s. Oh, so the second partial of v with respect to s plus r s partial of v with respect to s minus rv equals zero. All right, so is this linear or nonlinear? 
Well, it turns out that this is linear. All right, so why is this linear? We have this x, s squared in here, and s times a v, like there's no way, right? Well, this is linear because again, the v is the unknown function. The v is the unknown function, and we don't have uh, any v's in here uh, to a, a power higher than one, okay? And we don't have any v's multiplied by v's, and we don't have any signs of v's or anything like that, so, so we're good. So this function, uh, this function is actually linear. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of experience, a little bit of an idea how to classify linear versus nonlinear partial differential equations.